pins inside inside the pins. So what should I do? First of all, if I want to find the average shear stress inside that thing, right, anywhere here, right? First I need to find how much loading I have on the pin. And loading comes from, for example, here the loading comes from the beam. Beam. So if I if I compute the external reaction in the beam, that's gonna be the loading on this pin. So if if this uh, pin applied force in the beam this way, for example, the opposite is going to be applied on this pin at the middle, right? Same same problem I have here. If I want to find then on uh, shear at this pin here, I need to find the force in cable, right? So first, I need to do uh, external reaction analysis. The thing that we can make for is So I take this entire thing. I take this as my system. Then I do this one to the eight. You have a x a y. No moment. It's pin. Ten thirty. A here. Then you continue. Then you have tension and cable and B. I know that the tension in the cable is perfectly. Along the cable, you cannot have you cannot have shear at the cable. Why? Because it you cut it, right? The, the force is right here. So you have P at B and the direction three, four, five, and that's why that's everything. But the beam is right. No, no gravitational force, no body. So I go ahead and find both of them. Why do I want to find all of them? In the previous example, I saved my time. Instead of saying finding all of them, I just want the one on the left. Why? Because I only ask for shear at the internal point. But right now I'm asking for both force at A and B. Right? So I have to find both of them. So I say summation of moment for A, zero. This first one TV, then I get the E. A times this distance, which is 2. Is this meter? Position? 
Yeah, yeah and those are kilo newton. Right, so 30 times 2 with uh, negative, then you go to this guy plus PB times sine. The cosine one is doesn't have any, any moment, right? But it goes through that point. So you say sine 1.14 over 5 times the entire thing, 6, and it's plus to plus to 0. Solving that, let's, let's write all the equation and then I solve all of them. So then the next equation is summation of functions in the x, 0. So you get ax. These are in y plus pb times 3 over 5, 0. And summation of force in y, 0. That would give you a y negative 30 kN plus PB times 4 over 5, 0. Now you are at the solving stage. If you solve the first one, you get uh, this is going to, yeah, this is going to be 60. Uh, Divided by four point five k is TV and is positive. TV is equal to twelve point five kilo newton. Then you can substitute here to get AX. So your AX will be Minus 7.5? Yeah. <coughs> and then, obviously, you substitute here to get AY. AY is equal to? 4 over 5.
from two ends, I'll just put the net effect. So if this force is like that, at the middle, how was that force? 21 point? 36. Count in the middle. There is going to be two reactions at both ends. Because it's symmetric, we say they are equal. So let's say, because they are equal and symmetric, half is here, half is the other way, the other side. So 21 point 10.16 divided by 21.36 divided by 10.68 K is here, 10.68, K is here. Now I ask you to draw the shear force diagram for that. Realistically, would the 21.36 be a distributed load? Exactly. Realistically, please email the good ones. Realistically, everything in the nature is distributed. You don't have point. Everything in the nature is this way. In fact, between this connection, you see this beam is connected to at the middle of that. So you have some sort of beam like that here. You see? So between that, you have some sort of distributed load. You see? Which is very complicated. It's like that. And if you want to compute that, you have to go to final elements. The detail of, because this is not uniform, it's just get maximum here. But we say, well, just consider the net unit. Remember in vector static, we say if you have a distributed load, we replace it with the point load at the area center. Now we don't care about the area center. Our load is in, the, in this from three-dimensional perspective, it's somewhere in the middle, right? But I don't care about the radial location, what theta, what angle is it, right? I say it's just somewhere here. And I know the value of the total sum. What's the area under that? Is equal to the value comes from here. Exactly. Right? So that's the next effect that I consider here. So now, going back to the main problem, if I replace that with the point load and everything, which is a very good assumption. Now I want you to draw the shear force diagram for this pin. Look, this is this is this little pin here. It's not a pin, right? Yeah. So how do you draw it? Yeah. When you start from a point, let's say from here, you cut it at the location x, and then you find internal load, and then you have two interval from here to here, and then from here to here, right? <coughs> But that's the only thing that makes a change between these two intervals, right? So if I do from here to here, what do I get? Let's try it here. I get a V coming down at point X. There is a NX, X on the load, MX. These are the three components at this point, internal load in the other from here. <coughs> and then I have 10, 68K, and right here. So this is my system, right? I draw FVD for this little system right here. You see that? Everything is included. Now, if I want to find VX, what should I do? Summation of force in Y. So I get negative VX plus 10, 68, K is equal to zero. Negative VX plus 10, 68, K is equal to zero. And these two are, this in X direction, this bending one. So your shear force <coughs> is 10, 68. So let's draw it here. And it's positive. So from here to here, I need a blue. <coughs> From here to here, we have positive N68 K, your shear force. Now I want to draw it from here to here. What should I do? 
Well, again, this is your x is from here. You see my x. I just extend it like scrolling it to right. Extend it to somewhere here. And then still this is your x. Computer from there. Now for this, which which one should I take as system? This one or this one? Right. The one on the right, because it only has one force. So drive it here. If you do that, the one on the right, there comes. Now this is your V, positive, MX, NX. And this one is 10, 68K, all four positive, and uh, that's pretty much all of it. Now what is this distance from here to here? That's the length of the length of the pin is minus x. So I want to find shear. What should I do? Summation of forces. Y, 0. So I get Vx plus 10, 68k, right, is 0. So Vx is equal to negative 10, 68k. Let's put it on the diagram. So here, from here to here, you see this was positive, and then suddenly you have a jump, and then you get the same value negative, 10, 68k. That's your shim over diagram. Now, all this computation, I don't really need it anymore, because what was my TV that I computed here? This one, well, I put it here, so I have that. And I have my shear diagram, so I'm just ready to compute the stress. I don't need this information if you are just some calculation to get the shear diagram. But when you have shear diagram, you, do, you can do all, all, all sorts of things. Now, what is, what is the average shear? The maximum, let's say the maximum average shear there. Well, I have either positive, this force, what, what is this value? No, the 260 is not. The 260 is just single load here. Look, look at the shear. This is not, this is the external load that is applied. Look at the value of shear. This is the shear for diagram. shear. I have, from here to here, I have 1068. And then from here to here, I have negative 1068. Well, I know that because the magnitude, we're talking right now about magnitude. The magnitude 1060K, I just use either one of them. But I know that from here to here is positive shear, that means your cut is upward. And from here to here is downward. So the shear force at pin V, V at D, B at pin D is equal to one mistake that a student do, they say, well, let's put this force divided by cross-sectional area of 21. But look, if you draw a shear diagram, you never see 21 from 36. Every, at any cross-section, you only have either 10 or negative 10. That's the reason I say draw shear diagram. In your book, it's confusing. It doesn't cover this step. So the student gets confused, well, I have 21, then I should divide this 21.6 by area. Why, should, why I don't do that? And then you say, well, I have to divide by 2, because you have half here and half here going to shear diagram. So that's the reason I brought the shear diagram. So you say, uh, my tom at pin, the average shear at pin B, is equal to <coughs> A is equal to this is this is at A, right? Yeah. Is equal to 10, 68, 10 to 3 by area. Now the diameter is given, right? So you say pi R is square and R is 20, the diameter divided by 2 10 to negative 3, and twenty square. That's going to be the Q shear at pin A. But don't forget, it's positive shear here, negative shear here. 
So you don't have constant shear. Why you have discontinuity? Because of this force at the middle that comes from the beam. Okay. Now, what about this uh, pin? This pin? This one. If I draw shear diagram, what do I get? Let's say this is the pin at point B. You have a force, 12.5k, 12.5k comes from the, pit, uh, the cable, and then I want you to draw shear here. What do we get? The same thing. Because we, see, this was at the middle, so at the, at the reaction volume, we have to draw it by two. They call it double shear. But it, here, if you draw shear diagram anywhere, then you simply have anywhere is negative 12 point K. If you draw shear diagram for that. So how can I find the stress? I say tau average at in B is equal to 12.5 10 to 3 divided by area. Now the cross section area for this, the diameter is 30. So you say 15 n to negative 3 radius of square. That's it. Now let's go to design. Now things get interesting here. Uh, we have something first let's define factor of safety fs to define to define <coughs> as the ratio Sort of regulation. They call it design code. And 
and that regulation is talking about factor of safety. So they give a factor of safety for each of you, depending on the type of structure you want to design. If it's extremely, it should be extremely safe, then you should use the big number, like four or five. Why? Because what you do, you say, I have an over the stress, or not, uh, or the failure stress, the actual failure stress come from the, the structure handle. I divide it by that value, then it's my actual maximum stress that I use for my area calculation. Yeah. The thing that we did several times before. Yeah. Now you divide it, divide it by this factor. So the greater FS is, the safer your design your structure is. You can now we have, we'll have an example for that. So this is given to you. You don't compute factor of safety. You never compute factor of safety. This is given to you. Who gives that to you? The community. The code. Right? If they say take FS like 4. For a, a space structure, that is a small value. Why? Can you say that? That's a very small, like 1.2. So your calculation should be very accurate. <coughs> because you, you don't afford to have extra weight. If I have my safety factor like 10, then if this object fails at like 100 megapascal, then I'm designing for 100 divided by 10, 10 megapascal. Right? So the area should be very big. But for a space structure, you want to do your calculation very accurately so you don't have extra margin to cover for your numerical calculation fault. So here, for example, Square cross section area with dimension x, x by x. And we don't know, we don't know the x. And let's say the radius of this thing is r, and we don't know it. Right? So we don't know this size. 
But I know that this is made of steel and this is made of aluminum. And I have a 10K maximum load at 5 feet. Now, they say take factor of safety 1.5 and then find the minimum X and R such that this structure will not fail. Right? So find minimum X and R such that this structure will not fail. So what should I do? Well, this equation, you see this equation, use this equation. You have a factor of safety, which is in this case, 1.5, is defined as sigma of A, divided by sigma, and over. Now for a steel, these values that is given, these are the failure, the failure. So if I use my this equation, then I get two values. I get sigma L O for the steel is equal to sigma of A for a steel, which is 100 30 MPa divided by I'm just using this equation. Okay. Divide by one point. Look what happens here. The, if, if the safety factor is one, we just take that as a design value, value for us. But right now, we take less than that. That means the area cross section should be bigger to cover for that. Right? So, what about the aluminum? Sigma, I don't know for aluminium is equal to solve this for aluminium. So bring it here is equal to sigma of fair aluminium divided by 1.5. What is sigma of fair aluminium? 100 MPa divided by 1.5. You put the calculator. For the first one, you get 80? 86.6 repeat. And for the second, you get 66.6 repeat. MPA. Let's put 7 here. This is a digit. And for the, the second one, you get? 60.7. 60. 60. 66.7. 66.7. 60. 60. MPA. Thank you. Now, all I need, I have my and all of the stress that I can design it. All I need is to find the, the, the normal stress at any point here, and then use that equation to find the required cross-section area, and then solve for the given dimension. So what do I need right now? To find the stress at any point. So why not draw the stress, the normal stress diagram, right? So the normal stress diagram here is, let's say you x the sum from here. Let's say you x difference x is starting from here, x. And then you cut it somewhere between this new cost section. Right, but this is 3D. Right? So here, how much the axial load do I have? The axial load, it doesn't matter where you call it. The axial load is equal to 10K. It doesn't matter where you call it. But the stress matters. Why? Because it's the stress is normal axial load divided by area. So you have a change from here to here. Even though your axial load is the same, the area is different, so you have only jump in the curve, right? So if I, if I draw 
draw this curve here. Hopefully, I can draw it in 3D. Let's say this is an X. So from here to here, your uh, normal stress is what? 10K divided by is positive. And its value is equal to 10K. The X on load divided by, say, the area. What is the area of here? Radius squared. High R squared. Right? And it's positive from here to here. Then, when I go to the aluminum bar, what do I get? The shear stress, this, this is the shear stress diagram. Sigma. Oh, sorry, normal stress diagram. Sigma versus X. When I go from here to here, what do I get? I get a jump. You see? There is a jump here. Then I get 10K. Again, positive. 10K divided by? X squared. Thank you. Both of them positive. Right? Look, this is not the normal uh, force. This is not the axial force. The axial force, the dollar is just a constant. Why? It's equal to 10K. This is the normal stress. So we divide by area. Right? Now, we come back to this equation. Here, I have, for, uh, for the steel part, what should I do? I say, now my stress, which is 86.7 MPa, should be equal to what? The stress in this region. What, what is the maximum? Now, sometimes sometime you have variation like that. Then you repeat the maximum. Now, what is the maximum here? The same 10K over? Pi R squared. Now solve for radius. Should be a very small value. You'll we'll be surprised. R is equal to? Don't forget this is K. This is K. That means 10 times N to 3. And this is mega. N to 6. Now put the accuracy. Factor of safety is small. 
smaller. It should be smaller. Now take factor of 64. Uh, then it's going to be B. See how much bigger it is. Okay? When you go home, do things like that. Doesn't want, we don't need to only do things that we didn't avoid, but try to uh, play with your numbers. Okay? Now, another example. Uh, here, I want to give you a meter wave opportunity. So, please. Uh, Take out one uh, piece of paper and write your name on it because also it doesn't matter whatever you write on it. If you are present, you just put your name on it. You get a queen, 40 out of 40. So you know to put your name on it. You make it like an extra point of one. But if you can answer it, you get a meter paper. If you can answer it correctly, you get a meter paper. Thank <laughs> you.